It is book review time again today. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to be reviewing Robin Hobbs' The Tawny Man Trilogy. Hi everyone, it is Samantha and I am very excited about today's video because I get to review The Tawny Man Trilogy by Robin Hobb, one of my favorite series of hers so far and I can't wait to review it for you guys. So I'm going to have two videos up, one is going to be spoiler free and one is going to be a review and a discussion and that one will have spoilers but they're going to be split into two separate videos but the first half will be the same where I tell you the plot and kind of review it. The discussion bit will be the added bit. To that video so just make sure you're clicking on the right one in case you don't want to be spoiled because you haven't read it yet but rest assured that the beginning of both of those videos is the same so there is that so I thought I'll kind of start out the video with kind of a discussion on Robin Hobb's books and where to start because I get asked that question all the time so I will now tell you guys so you want to start from the beginning with Robin Hobb's books I think that you gain a lot by doing so particularly with the way the stories will intersect even with the live ship books with the Farseer books so I recommend starting with the Farseer books the first book is Assassin's Apprentice which I'm currently lending out so I can't show you the second book is The Royal Assassin, and then book three is Assassin's Quest. You can then move on to the live ship books, which includes The Ship of Magic, book one. Book two is The Mad Ship, which I'm also lending out, and then book three is The Ship of Destiny. And from there, you can move on to the Tawny Man books, which I'll be reviewing here today. The first book is Fool's Errand, book two is The Golden Fool, and then book three is Fool's Fate. And then from there, you move on to the Rainwilds books, which I'll be starting next month, and then after that is The Fits in the Fool trilogy where the second book has just been published. That's kind of where you need to start. I think that you gain a lot by starting at the beginning, particularly with the way that stories intersect and weave together and it all kind of culminates in the Tawny Man trilogy. I cannot sing her praises enough. I know you guys hear me talk about her all the time, but I don't praise authors lightly and these are seriously some of the best books I have ever read, some of the best fantasy, and I think that they really appeal to people who A, are new to fantasy and don't know where to start, and B, people who don't typically read fantasy, I think would really enjoy these as well. Just because the themes that she deals with are very universal, they can be very character driven. Though there are events that happen in the world that kind of drive the plot, a lot of it is very much character focused, and the way that she does that is very beautifully done. And so I think that even if you don't typically read fantasy as a genre, that you will still enjoy these books a lot. So that's kind Kind of my overview of Robin Hobbs books and where to start and why I think that people would enjoy them. So now I'll actually get into the actual review of the Tawny Man Trilogy. The Tawny Man Trilogy takes place about 15 years after the end of Assassin's Quest and a few years after the Ship of Destiny. The story starts with Fool's Errand, which is book one, and we are again back with Fitz. The story is again told from Fitz's perspective. It opens with Fitz, who is now 35, and we learn that he has been living on his own with his wolf Night Eyes and his foster son Hap, whom he took in about the age of seven. And together they've been kind of living alone in this cottage kind of far away from Buckcape Castle and all their politics. And Fitz is still kind of living in hiding basically since a lot of people think that he is still dead so he's just kind of been living in seclusion that he will receive occasional visits from the minstrel Starling. However soon in the beginning Fitz is soon unwillingly, unwillingly thrust back into Buckkeep politics when he receives an urgent missive from his old mentor Shade requesting his immediate presence and help back at Buckkeep Castle. Shade and Queen Kittrigan need Fitz's help in order to secure and rescue the young Prince Dutiful who has been kidnapped by the witted group called the Piebalds. This is a very militant group in the old blood or witted community, of which Fitz is one, he has the wit, who is kind of trying to seek revenge upon all the past wrongs that have been put upon them, all the murders and things that have happened for people who have the wit. So they have kidnapped Prince Dutiful in order to fulfill their objective, and the Queen and Shade need Fitz's help in order to get the Prince Dutiful back. So Fitz returns and ends up taking on the persona of Tom Badgerlock, who is a man servant to Lord Golden. Lord Golden is the fool himself, who has also recently returned to Buckkeep after his many adventures. Fitz is again thrust back into the court intrigues and politics of the six duchies, as him and the as Fitz and the fool end up setting out to rescue Prince Dutiful before his patrol ceremony to the Narcheska, who is one of the daughters of the clan leaders of the Out Islanders, who are the people that the Six Touches were warring in the first series. Fitz and the Fool soon find out that there is a lot more at stake than they first sought, beyond the missing prince and his betrothal to the Out Islander bride, as all of the Fool's prophecies begin to culminate in one epic finale. Overall, I found this to be one of Robin Hobb's best series yet. The character growth, plot development, and world building were impeccably and beautifully done. The fair character of Fitz himself is a far cry from the young lad that we left off with in Assassin's Quest. He has shown 
a true growth and maturity that he did not display in the first series and I absolutely loved it the way that she has realistically grown his character was really wonderful to see he's finally able to think for himself and make his own decisions not based upon what everybody else wants him to do the fool is another character that we really get to see more of in the series we get to learn more about him and his past and she explores fits into the fool's relationship in such a way that is so beautiful it's seriously one of the most beautiful relationships and friendships between two people that I have ever encountered in literature before as I've come to expect from Hobbes work the characters are fleshed out and complex the plot feels very realistic and real and you just feel super invested in the story the writing itself is fantastic Robin Hobb really has a big grasp of the English language she's able to vividly bring to life the world that this takes place in and invoke really strong emotions in the reader the way that she has woven the story from the first book of Assassin's Apprentice to the last book in this trilogy Fool's Fate was one of the most amazing things I have ever witnessed or I've ever read it was just so well done the way that she wove everything together into that last book it was so so good overall the series was excellent if you have read the first series the first trilogy the farseer books if you weren't so sure if you want to continue on a lot of people found the third book assassin's quest to be a bit of a struggle i personally really enjoyed it but rest assured her books get a lot better you can definitely see her writing mature as the books go along and it is never more apparent than it was in this series so i really 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 enjoyed this book series so much the first book pool's errand i ended up rating four out of five stars it was an introductory book so not a whole lot happened but trust me the story ends up picking up in the other two I ended up giving book two, The Golden Fool, a 5 out of 5 stars, and the last book, Fool's Fate, I rated it a 10 out of 10 stars. Yes, I'm giving this more than 5 because it deserves it. It is the best book I have read this year. One of the best books I have ever read is definitely on the top of my list, up with Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, which is saying something, so it's mean a lot to me. All I have to say is that... It is worth reading all of Robin Hobb's books just to get to this one book. It was that amazing. I have never cried so much during a book. I cried so many times while reading this. It really, really got to me. There were happy tears. There were sad tears. There was just a lot of tears. A lot of tears. So it really affected me emotionally, which is really hard to do. That doesn't happen to me very often. So the fact that she was able to invoke that strong of a reaction says something about her writing. And the ending itself was amazing. I don't even know where, how, where she's going to go with the story. Because I know there's another trilogy called The Fits and the Fool trilogy where we're back with them and I can't even imagine what's going to happen. I mean, it was that well done. It was so good. And I'm not exaggerating. That is high praise for me.